Hello, and welcome to the Futurum Tech Webcast. I'm Shelley Kramer, Principal Analyst and Founding Partner here at Futurum Research, and I'm here today with Carol Wilder, who's the VP of Integrated Solutions for Dell Technologies, and we're going to have a conversation today about AI ops. Um, you know, some backstory here. Uh, if you're in IT, I'm not telling you anything you don't know. The pressure is on <laughs> and it is getting hotter every day. And what we know is that organizations and their IT teams are trying to drive their digital transformation journeys forward. They're trying to simplify operations with regard to their on-prem infrastructure. They're really focused on protecting data in the cloud. Mm -hmm. um, and they're dealing with massive amounts of data which of course is growing at an exponential rate. All of these things combined with a very real need to do more with less means that many organizations are turning to AI ops. So what do organizations need to know about AI ops? This is exactly what Carol and I will be discussing today and I'm really excited for this conversation. Carol, welcome, yeah. it's great to have you. Thanks for having me, that'll be great. It's gonna it'll be great. Be, it'll be great. So. Tell me a little bit, if you would, about your career backstory. Set the stage. How'd you get to where you are? I actually was in uh, operations very early in my career yeah. in uh, semiconductor test. And I supported and watched the operations of semiconductor test very early. And sort of straight away and did a whole bunch of other things and then ended up in data center uh, at a CPU supplier, Intel. Uh, and as I was really learning and, and working in data center, it was like, how can we get a better probability of features that were being built in the CPU in an operational way so that they would be valued? And really tried to understand what was happening in the data center operations and what were their challenges so that we could build technologies that would make a difference. Right. Um, I ended up leaving Intel and then going to a config management company and working on something similar, but also understanding how to optimize that experience. Um, and so that's how I sort of got involved in AI ops, in observability, and really how do I use my data to the best of its ability or best of what I have in okay. order to affect the outcomes of cycle time and resource utilization. And those were the two things that were really important. Absolutely. So what's your role at Dell today? My role at Dell today is cross-platform software and solutions. And so what we aim to do is to take across all of um, ISG, which is the infrastructure solutions uh, group, right. and combine it together in one area of cross-platform goodness for software so that we basically create software that that is a uh, normalized customer experience that we can fix once and it will go to many different products mm -hmm. and we can make sure that we're very consistent in what we provide our customers and so ai ops and what we're working on with that provides a consistent uh, right. monitoring and and recommendation experience for our customers yeah, I look at AI ops as really, you know, a solution that has the ability to do the heavy lifting for a, for IT teams, you know, and, and I think that we live in a world, of course, where AI and, and machine learning are becoming increasingly common as mm -hmm. it relates to DevOps and, and, you know, AI ops is the pairing of these two. Um, with management tools, and yep. we've got a market that is absolutely exploding. So it's just such an important part of um, it's such an important part of IT operations these days. It is, and there's a lot of of um, point players. I think the biggest uh, issue continues to be is I can point out a problem, but how do I remediate the problem in a way that doesn't create tool sprawl? That is that allows customers to get the data in a timely fashion and also in a way that they can subsume that in an easier way. So right. an easier way. And my point being is that there are some pieces of data that realistically they won't matter. It, it's not like it's not a seconds decision. And then there's other data that it is seconds decision and it's being able to work on those recommendations and on those the the data that we're going up that allows customers to optimize um, their infrastructure operations 
in a way that makes sense. Um, and I think that's what AI ops delivers, is it a, a way to look at your own infrastructure and know what's going on and make decisions uh, on a timely basis. Absolutely. You know, I read something when I was prepping for this conversation that said, uh, you know, there's no future of IT operations that doesn't include AI ops. I'm mm -hmm. guessing you agree. Yes, <laughs> I do. But I also think that there is a way also, it doesn't always have to be AI. Yeah. You can get a long way with state machines. So if then else is as well. So I always recommend that, you know, okay, let's look at state machines first and then add in AI, because AI um, can, in some cases, you know, add complexity that is, at the first instantiation, not necessary, and then as we move forward, becomes more and more necessary. Right, right. And so it's really a multivariable uh, equation that you have to go navigate in order to help, help the customers. Well, and legacy IT tools are still important. I think that's part of what you're saying here. Yep. You know, and AI ops can, you know, they differ from legacy tools, but I think collectively they're both important parts of that same equation. Yep, exactly. And you have to work within the tools that our customers are using in order to make sure that it fits in because once you try to displace tools or add right. tools, that creates a level of complexity that a lot of customers are uncomfortable with right. and it requires them to invest. So how do you fit this in with a minimum amount of investment and then add investment incrementally over time? Yeah, that makes perfect sense. E expecting anyone to do a rip and replace is is you know not logical right so yeah. figuring out how things can coexist together i think that's yeah. an important part of this equation so let's talk a little bit about dell and how dell fits into the ai ops picture so dell has a number of products that are in the monitoring and observability space um, that basically uh, help our customers to understand their data coming off of dell hardware um, and dell equipment and being able to uh, go into larger tool sets or dashboards or whatever is required by the customer and be able to do that. And one of them is Cloud IQ. Um, and Cloud IQ allows us to work with customers on their needs to understand their own infrastructure, um, both in SRE, in DevOps, in, and we have some offshoots for security, um, and so that's what we essentially do here at Dell. That makes perfect sense. That makes perfect sense. So let's talk about, you know, there are benefits that every customer is looking for, right? They want improved performance. They want, you know, um, a, a reduced time for detecting mm -hmm. problems and problem resolution and that sort of thing. Let's let's narrow in if we can on some of the benefits that customers get from Dell's AI ops today. Yeah. So today, what they do is we have increased monitoring, right. and 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 we're able with very specificity to help our customers absolutely understand what they have to do to fix their infrastructure. Right. And so it's a, it's, it is a cycle time. I always look at outcomes of products in three, there's three outcomes customers want. The first outcome is always, do I have, by using your software equipment, do I have access to a larger market? Or am I able to get to a larger market for market share or revenue? The right. second is there's cycle time reduction. And the third is, are you helping me with resource, resource utilization? So are you able to help me on my human or physical assets? And so what we do is we prioritize the last two so that customers are either saving money or right. have better utilization so they have more cash left over in order to go fund um, things that are going to get them to a larger market share. That is never a phrase that is not attractive. Mm -hmm. More cash available to do more things, right? Yeah. You know, one of the things that I that I've noticed is that, or I've seen as part of the value prop here for Dell Solution is that, um, you know, it has the ability to reduce issues two to ten times faster, yes. and can essentially save IT departments the equivalent of one day per week on average. I mean. 
let me just say this: someone who's sitting here for the last week going, oh my gosh, I wish I had six more weeks in this month alone, right? I mean, time is such a valuable resource. So seeing that the equivalent of one day per week, that's a exactly. lot. The data that we've collected, which you cited, thank you, um, is basically allowing our customers to have time left over in order to go pursue, you know, a problem resolution, but also be able to pursue other markets or things right. that they deem important. And as we go forward with that, we're looking at greater and greater gains with our customers to ensure that they are put in the most competitive position with their competitors and their markets right. um, and, and keep them moving forward where everybody's trying to be, right? Mm -hmm. So let's talk a little bit about the future of AI ops. So, you know, I think that what we're looking at based on what I know, we're looking at, you know, increased capabilities, um, you know, of AI ops being able to proactively do a lot of the heavy lifting for IT teams moving right. forward, you know, whether it's intelligent recommendation engines um, that speak to capacity performance. I know there are other things. Talk with us a little bit if you would about what you know the future that we that you see for AI ops. Yeah, so I think there is always the data, then there's the intelligence layer, and then there's the top right. recommendation layer. Right. It's basically getting specifics for maybe different market sets on recommendations, but basically finally honing those recommendation engines so that customers get what is meaningful at the time that they need it. So right. that's one thing that we're continuing to invest in. Um, the second is looking at capacity, looking at what potential customers have for resource utilization and being able to use their capacity and, and other tooling structures so that their, the effectiveness of their infrastructure is there. Right. Um, we're looking at system lifecycle. So how do you go through and, 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 and evaluate your infrastructure? Uh, from a life cycle standpoint, so that you're using your equipment in workload placement for right. the best applications and knowing that that workload placement is getting the best profitability off of that infrastructure. Right, absolutely. And, and well, and then you've also got, you know, firmware updates, which are huge correct. and important part of keeping systems healthy and whole. And I yeah. think that the ability to execute those quickly across a variety of systems is really a key part of the value proposition as well. Am I right? Yes. And and all upgrades and all, you know, sequencing of right. updates and, and also keeping people safe with security. And being able to do that monitoring for security yeah. as well are those are things that we continue to improve on. Right. Awesome. And work on. Awesome. All right. Well, I'd love to wrap this conversation with a look ahead. What can we expect in the future from Cloud IQ? I think, well, I know within Cloud <laughs> IQ, um, we're looking at continuing to broaden our set of data um, and understanding what that data is. Uh, in all products uh, with Dell. So we're continuing to add to our data set and then also look at algorithms that provide recommendations faster to our customers and better and just basically strengthening that uh, value chain um, and allowing our customers also, we're looking at how do we do integrations um, with other tooling structures right. so that customers don't have to have tools for all. So we're continuing to weigh, you know, what are our integrations and, and what are we going to do? Um, and, and so those are, it's just, it's, it's strengthening that relationships with our customers of what they're, what they're needing. And, and then also looking at what are they going to be measuring in the long term right. and how to basically uh, uh, know that we're doing the right things in their stead. Right. Well, so. it sounds like there's good things ahead. I think it'll be fun. It's going to be a <laughs> there's great, good things great ahead. time. Well, Carol Wilder from Dell Technologies, thank you so much for thank joining you. me. This has been, a, I knew it was going to be a terrific conversation about AI ops um, for our viewing audience, for our listening audience. If you're interested in some more information about how Cloud IQ can help you, or you'd like, you know, a deeper dive with Carol and her team, I'll include some resource links in our show notes for you. Um, 
I'll include a bunch of the things that we talked about here. But with that, Carol, thanks so much for spending time with me today. It was a fantastic conversation, as I knew it Thank would you. be. Thank you so much. Take All care. Right. We'll All talk right. soon. Bye.